Welcome to the Foothills Baptist Living Christmas Tree Technical Blog. This blog entry will be the first in a series of video blogs on programming a MIDI light equipped living Christmas tree and will cover tempo mapping. The MIDI light system can control thousands of lights and is capable of responding very quickly allowing you to program many spectacular effects that can enhance the presentation of the gospel. But unless you can synchronize the effect to the music, the effect will just fall flat. This clip shows how effective syncing an effect to the music can be. Listen for the moving flute and the glean effect for an example. How do we sync the effect? For pre-recorded music, it's simple. We know that each time the song is played, it will play exactly the same every time. As an example, we can say that at 7.3 seconds after the start of the song, we can program an effect and know that it will display exactly the same every time. It's a different story for live music. How do we guarantee that at 7.3 seconds that the song will be played exactly the same each time it's played? We know which measure the flute plays at and for how many beats. If we had a way to make sure that the measure happened exactly at 7.3 seconds and that the rest of the beats happen in a known amount of time, we can program the effect we want. We do this by providing a click track that the conductor listens to and uses to keep the choir and orchestra on track. Each click happens in a known amount of time, which we measure as beats per minute. We call this the tempo of a song. Tempo mapping is the process of syncing a song from an audio track to the measure numbers of the song in a MIDI sequencer. We do this by adjusting the tempo in the sequencer until it matches the track. The MIDI sequencer that we use is Digital Performer from Motu. Digital Performer is a recommended application for programming a MIDI light system, and because Digital Performer is a Macintosh only program, we are allowed to use a Macintosh for programming. You're not locked into using Digital Performer, however. You can use any sequencing program on any platform. Once we have Digital Performer open, we need to open a new project. In this case, I'm creating a new one on the desktop. I'm calling it Christmas 2009. Now that we have it open, we come into the main window. We need to set it up first before we can use it. There's some extra tracks that have been put in, so we need to delete those first. We select them all, go to Project Menu, and select Delete Tracks. Let's examine Digital Performer's windows a little more closely. First up is the Control Panel, which houses several different controls, like the Transport and the Counters. We'll examine more areas in later videos. Next is the Consolidated window. This Consolidated window displays information about the current sequence. A sequence is a complete performance and consists of a collection of tracks. A track holds time-based information. That is to say, at some time, something will happen. What that something is depends on the type of track. Digital Performer is a digital audio workstation and can do more than sequence MIDI information and does this by using different types of tracks. Digital Performer has audio tracks, both mono and stereo, MIDI tracks, and several other types of tracks that we will not get into much, and a conductor track. The conductor track is a special track that controls how Digital Performer plays the rest of the tracks, and there is always exactly one conductor track in a sequence. The conductor track is used to control the meter, key, and tempo of the sequence. For this video, we'll only be using the conductor track. Within the consolidated window, there are several sub-windows that you can switch between using the tabs. We will only be concerned with the Tracks window and the Sequence Editor for this video. Let's take a look at the Tracks window. The Tracks window is split in two. The Track list displays all of the tracks in the sequence and a lot of other information that we'll not deal with. The second half is the Tracks overview that displays the condensed view of the track timeline. The Sequence Editor shows a detailed view of the track and allows you to edit what is happening in the track. There are a couple of additional sub-windows called sidebars in the consolidated window that we can display. The sidebars are mainly used to display lists of information about the current sequence. Let's open a sidebar by clicking on the Window Menu gadget and selecting the Event List. 
that opens up the right sidebar. Equivalently, there is a left sidebar, but we're not going to worry about that now. Now we need to import some audio. We do that by going to File, Import Audio, and it brings up Input Dialog. I have a disc that I've imported with our Christmas music, and I'm going to import One Solitary Life. You need to select it and do an Add for it to open. Now, One Solitary Life is from Word Music and comes from the Spirit of Christmas, Christmas Cantata. I picked this one because it shows quite a bit of the techniques that you need to know. Now, the audio is imported as sound bites into Digital Performer. To get at them, we need to open a different area, the right sidebar. We do that by clicking on the event list marker and going down to sound bites. We can now see that the sound bite that we imported is now in the sound bite submenu. We can make a new audio track containing the sound bite by clicking on its move column and dragging the sound bite to the tracks list. Checking with the score of One Solitary Life, we see that the music starts at measure 1. This isn't necessarily what we want to do. We'd like to start before that so that we have time to set up the tree for different things. Also give a count off for the conductor so that he can move right into the measure one when it starts. So we need to adjust that. We can do that by clicking this toggle here, going to sequences and set chunk start time and set that to minus one. That will make the chunk actually start at the measure minus one. So we can go in and we can see now, yes, truly it does start at minus one. We do have a problem because the sound bite needs to start at measure 1. We can try to drag the sound bite so that it starts in the correct place. But we see that it didn't align correctly. This is because Digital Performer is trying to snap to the start of an even beat. We can align the start of the music to the correct place by holding the command key, clicking on where the music starts playing, and dragging to the downbeat of measure 1. We are now ready to start tempo mapping our song. In tempo mapping, we are matching the rhythmic structure of the song so that the sequencer will reproduce clicks that the conductor can use to direct the choir or orchestra. The rhythmic structure is made up of the tempo and the meter changes in the song. As we said before, the tempo is how fast the song plays and the meter is how many beats there are per measure. Both the tempo and the meter can change during the song and are usually noted in the score. The meter change is always noted in the score and is written as two numbers one over the other at the beginning of the measure that the change happens. The top number is the number of beats in the measure and the bottom number shows the note value. A whole note gets a one, a half note gets a two, a quarter note gets a four, an eighth note gets an eighth, etc. Measures are numbered starting from 1, and beats within the measure are also numbered from 1. In Digital Performer, this is displayed in the counter. The first number is the measure number, the second is the beat number, and the third is the ticks. Digital Performer divides each beat into 480 ticks. We'll use the ticks when we get into programming. Let's examine the score for meter changes. The score starts with the meter of 4-4. Four, four. At measure 2, it changes to 2-4 and back to 4-4 at measure 3. The meter again changes to 2-4 at measure 5 and back to 4-4 at 6. The rest of this tutorial is continued in Tempo Mapping Part 2. You can find it at lcttech.foothillsbaptist.org.